ought to be the same in your marriage, ought to be the same with your children. Listen to me. We are praying for our daughter Jennifer. We're praying for her. And I hope you're praying with us. We're reaching out to Jesus. We done spent all we got. We're reaching to Jesus in faith. Lord, do what you've got to do. That's difficult as a parent, isn't it not? Because we don't know what the Lord is going to do. But we got to trust him that whatever he does is right. But somehow, we are believing that God is going to work in this child's life. Yes, sir. We love her to death. That's in my heart. And we're trusting God. You trust women. In fact, I need you all to come out on Wednesday. Help me pray for her. And you need to come out and pray for yourself. Because when you come to pray, guess what you're doing? You're reaching out and you're touching. That's what it looks like. What does it look like? What does it look like for us to reach out and touch Jesus today? How do we touch the hymn of his God? I tell you how you do it through prayer. Amen. That's how you do it. And what is interesting is the crowd pressed and Jesus said, somebody touched me. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it wasn't, he didn't know. Anytime God asks a question like that, he wants the person to come to the realization. Cain, where's your brother? The Lord knew where he was. Adam, who told you he was naked? The Lord knew. Why does he do that? Because in asking a question, he oftentimes wants us to come to the realization of where we are. The woman got behind him and she touched him and Jesus said, somebody touched me. Peter had, you know Peter, Peter gonna say it. <laughs> what do you mean somebody touched me? We in a crowd. That's Peter, is it not? You probably thought about it later and said, uh oh. <laughs> That's Peter. He, he, he talked before he said What do you mean? The others said the same thing. The people throwing their pressure on you. What do you mean somebody touched you? No, no, no. Somebody touched me. <laughs> because power left. Power, virtue, virtue. says, come boldly to my throne because he's touched with the feelings of all of our infirmities. He was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So the same experience of the woman happens every single time that you and I go to the Lord and pray. When we reach out to the Lord and touch him, he says, I'm touched with the feeling, the virtue, the power. Somebody touched me. Then we see, finally, <coughs> the humility of this woman. Verse 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him. And how she was healed in <coughs> He said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made me Go in peace. Hemorrhaging every day, bleeding every day, bleeding every week, bleeding every month. As Leviticus says, the seven day cycle doesn't stop, keeps going for 12 years. And you spend every penny you have trying to be whole. One day you get behind Jesus, you reach out, and you touch the hem. And immediately, immediately, she was healed. When Jesus asked, she just fell down before him. She humbled herself. 
not knowing what would be the response. But Jesus personalized in the humility, daughter. Wow. Daughter. Daughter. You be a good chief. Cheer up. Get some joy. Your faith. Your faith. Now you go and you go in peace. Let me tell you something. There's personally with God, intimacy with God in humility. Because God the Son humbled himself to the Father. The Bible says that God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. Peter says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time.